All right, I want to look at a little use case and something that I want to do here and change it up here on the fly. I haven't done this yet. I want to work through it now. So in essence, I want to move all my screen UI items here and I want to move them over to replicated storage. And the reason for that is as follows. So right now, here's an instance where I have this chain of wait for childs. And the problem with that, uh, one, it's messy. One, it's, it also can be a little dangerous. Now, while this is kind of an edge case, if for whatever reason it's waiting for the first item, and then, you know, for whatever reason the UI gets deleted or something moves around, I don't know. There's a lot of unknowns that could happen. But anytime you're waiting for something, uh, something could happen in between that time when you started waiting to the time it's done waiting, right? So in essence, any yield like this is dangerous in terms of, you know, the state could have changed of items, I don't know. Um, so chaining them like this can be a little dangerous just inherently. Plus it's just messy. Like I don't like having all this here. And I don't want to, you know, break down a, a, or write a function every time to break it down and make it simpler. So um, how can we eliminate the need for this? So the first thing we need to do is understand why we need it in the first place. Um, anytime you're using UIs from specifically from starter UI here, we need to use that uh, to guarantee that the objects have loaded. Um, and let me explain that a little more. When your player spawns, uh, the UI is replicated over to the player. Um, however, that's not an instantaneous thing. You know, while one, your top level item may have been replicated, the items within it may have not been yet. Think of like you're downloading a big file. It doesn't come in right away. It comes in in little chunks at a time. Very similar to, I mean, it's not a big file, but the same idea is there is where you're, you're, you're streaming information in and it's not all at once. Um, so we have to do this to guarantee that the objects have uh, been replicated over. However, there's a way to get around this and let's look at that. And so other developers on Roblox are doing this actually already. And I learned this from them. This is not something I came up on my own, but in the game object, so that's data model right here. If you're not familiar, data model is uh, the game object there. So if I do game.class name and I print that out, it's data model. That's the actual class name for it. The data model has a couple items we can utilize. First is is loaded. And as it says, it will return true if the client has finished loading the game for the first time. And respectively, we also have an event called loaded. So we can actually wait for the game to be completely loaded as such. So if not game is loaded, then game.loaded waits. And that will yield the script until the game has been fully loaded. So you could say, well, okay, can we just throw that in then? And then we can safely use the items within the, uh, our, our GUIs. And the answer to that is no. And the reason for that is these are replicated over, again, the first time the player spawns its character, not when the player enters the game. So everything that is involved in this process, checking if the game has loaded, uh, has nothing to do with the player's screen GUIs, which is a little confusing, but that's just the way it works, right? Because it's just not part of that initial process of streaming in data. However, replicated storage is part of that process. So by the time this code finishes here and I print, you know, all done loading or something, by this point, we can guarantee that all our objects within replicated storage are ready to go. Uh, and so because of that, we could just move all our UIs over to replicated storage. And then all we would have to do is something like uh, game get service replicated storage dot uh, my screen GUI, whatever, clone, and then parent it into the player GUI. Uh, you know, that's messy code, but that, you know, that gets to the gist of what I'm going for here. Um, is that then we can just immediately pick it up, clone it over, and put it into the player GUI. 
Um, and with clone, because we're, you know, we're copying an object locally and it's remaining locally, we're not replicating this at all. As soon as we clone it and that clone function is done, all the objects are available. We don't have to wait for those objects after clone, after it's cloned. So this would be a safe way to do this. Um, so all that being said, all I want to do is move these items over to replicated storage and uh, create another script that will clone them in at the beginning of the game. All right. This might be a little tricky because um, I want to be able to preserve the ability to edit. Uh, like, you know, right now I can edit the UI on, and I can see it on screen here. So I need to have some sort of like plugin or something to switch between the two. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now, but what I am going to do is at least create a structure for this where I want to put them. So right now I actually have UI prefabs within replicated storage. So little items that I create, such as like the chat item or the play, player list item for each player. I have this pre-created. I don't want to make those programmatically. So I keep those there already. Um, so I might just add another folder here. I don't know what to call it, core. Uh, kind of the core UIs for the game. And for now, let's just kind of throw them all in there. Oh, it's so weird, just a blank screen now. Uh, okay, so we have them all in core. Now we need to copy them over to the player's, player's UI when they enter the game. So I could just do it within here. I could make another local script, call them load GUI. And uh, let's just do that. So actually in our intro script, we already have that code snippet right here. So we can reuse that. And then we can just go grab it. So we can say um, the core equals uh, what game gets service replicated storage dot UI dot core. And then we want to scan through this, grab each one and pl place it in the player GUI. Okay, so all I have to do is make a little loop. So for skin GUI and core, my pairs, core get children. All I'm going to do is screen GUI clone, that parent, this player GUI. So now we have to reference this somehow, which would just be game players, local player dot player UI. And I'm pretty sure that this has been changed to be guaranteed to be loaded uh, when this is done. I'm pretty sure that's more recent change in the last year. Um, if we run into issues, we'll, we'll change that. And right now, all my other code, while it's still using wait for child, that's fine. It should still work as long as those items are cloned over. All right, so let's try that. This is the intro GUI, so it doesn't matter. And yeah, it looks like all the items are there. That's cool. Seems to be working. Awesome. So it looks like all my screen items are still working and that's great. Now I want to highlight also a tweet that I got from one of our dudes that work on uh, vehicle simulator right here. Check this out. So I was, I was kind of messaging, you know, is, there, is there a good way to do this? Um, look at this. In vehicle simulator, I think I assume that's what he's talking about. Uh, they saved over a gigabyte of memory, or memory, <laughs> of memory of RAM, um, just by switching to this method. And I assume, or I know the reason for that, as he is mentioning, is because now, because I'm just cloning that locally in a local script, uh, that's only seen locally. So the server doesn't have a bunch of copies of the uh, GUI for every single player uh, in server memory 
because that's pointless. You don't need that in server memory. It just has the, the one copy of them and replicate in storage and that's it. All right, so this seems to be working. Uh, I'm not gonna record this, but the most of this, now I'm gonna kind of go through and start removing all these wait for childs and all my scripts. <laughs> Again, this is just for the UI items. So just an example, if I wanna remove these ones, just do that. Now there's probably a way I could do like a find and replace with um, some sort of uh, uh, regex expression or something, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. So, okay, that's it for this.